One Corpse Too Many by Ellis Peters, dramatized by Alan Downer. With Glyn Houston as Brother Cadfail and Jane Slavin as Goddess Aidney. Brother Cadfail? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh... Brother Oswald. Come, come along, boy, come along. Yes, sir. Oh, this heat will be the death of me. Oh, and you toiling away out here an example to us all, Brother Cadvile. <laughs> well, I've laboured under hotter suns than this. And sadly, the compost won't find his own way into the cabbage bed. <laughs> oh, well, here's a youngster who says he's not afraid of hard work. How would you like him as a helper? Oh, gladly. What's your name, lad? Godric, sir. Speak up, boy. He mumbles. Godric, sir. How old are you? Seventeen. Oh, you're small for your age. Oh, I can work hard and I'm quick to learn. I'll do whatever you tell me. <laughs> oh, well, so you shall then. Well, fetch yourself a sickle from over there uh, by the hut. Eh? Yes, sir. Another family trying to keep its children out of the war. It would seem so. He was brought here by a good woman of the town. He's to be taught as a lay servant. Uh, there's a year's endowment with him, so Prior Robert has agreed to take him in, and he'll attend school with the novices. Ready, sir? Oh, good. Well then, Godric, work hard and see you come to Vespers with Brother Cudvile. Yes, sir. And after supper, Brother Paul, the master of the novices, will tell you your duties and show you your bed. Uh, you'll sleep in the dortoir with the others. Yes, sir. Good, good. Well, mind you pay attention to what Brother Cudvile says and be obedient to him. <laughs> I will, sir. Good, good, good. Ah, <coughs> oh, well then, uh, Godric, come with me and I'll show you what you're taking on. Are you in charge of all the gardens? I am. And you do all the work on your own? Well, they've offered me Brother Athanasius as an assistant, but he's deaf, ancient, and doesn't know a useful herb from a weed. God bless him. So I politely but firmly decline. You should have helpers. Oh, I did have two until recently. Youngsters like yourself. But their families belong to Empress Maud's faction. And with the approach of King Stephen's army, they both felt there were safer places to be than here in Shrewsbury under siege. Well, they're saying in the town that the siege can't last much longer. Well, the King's men have been camped beyond the foregate for a month now. It can only be a matter of time. Oh, it's not right. Before King Henry died, he made all the barons acknowledge the Empress Maud as his heir. She was his only living child. She should be queen. Well, Stephen is King William's grandchild, just as Maud is. But he's not the son of the last king. Count Stephen seized the throne when the Empress was away in Normandy. And now what's to come of it all but bloodshed and deaths? Godric, here in the monastery, we're in a battlefield as much as in the town, since our gates are never closed to any. And there's many a man about eager to buy favour with King Stephen by carrying tales... So best keep your thoughts in your head. They are much safer there. I'm sure I can trust you. Just keep your lips locked when among others. Yes, sir. Now then, um, your task for today uh, is to clear these pea plants. Eh? Cut them off close to the ground. And we'll use them later to give goodness to the soil. Oh, do you know how to use one of these things? Oh, I'll soon learn. Uh, it's hard on the hands, mine. I don't mind, I don't mind. <laughs> Well, when I've uh, finished my cabbage patch, I'll come and help you. Yes, sir. In a smooth arc? Yes, sir. Yes? Well done. Ah, no need to make a penance of it, lad. <laughs> Not in the heat. You'd be like me. You strip off to the west and be comfortable. Oh, I'm all right as I am for the moment, sir. Thank you. Are you now? I am not waiting outside these walls forever, Prescott. No, Your Grace. Four weeks now, and still they defy me from the battlements. Oh, their provisions can't last much longer. I've been too patient, that's the trouble, too generous. Till now, I've always held the doors open for penitents to come in, and this is the result. Your Grace. Yes, Adam, what is it? There are two here requesting audience with Your Grace. Not now. One of them's a young lady, and she has no lodging yet, and, well, in view of the lateness oh, of the Oh, very hour, well. Who's the other? Hugh Berringer of Maysbury. Robert Berringer's son. You know him, Prescott? I do. He's a friend of Fitz Allen and Aidney, who lead the resistance here. Until now, I'd have thought him your enemy. Then let him wait. I'll see the lady first.
Well, madam? Your Grace, my name is Aileen Seward. It was the wish of my late father that you should be given the keys of the two castles we hold. I humbly do so now. We can raise for your grace five knights and more than forty men at arms, all at your disposal, should you have need of them. I thank you for your pains. There is something else, your grace, and I say it with great sorrow. Yes? I have a brother, Giles. He should have been the one to perform this duty, but after an open quarrel with my father, he took the part of the Empress Maud and left home to join her party. I see. I hope you will not see this as a reason to refuse what I bring, but will use it freely, as my father would have wished. Your brother, is he inside the castle now? I don't know. There's been no communication between us since he left home, but it's rumoured that he fled to France. Well, child, God forbid I should add to your sorrows. Your fealty is as dear to me as that of any earl or baron, and I take it with all my heart. Now, it's almost evening, and I hear you have no lodging for the night. I'd hoped my maid and I might lodge at one of the abbey houses across the river. Adam, see Mr. Seawood safely installed. Gladly, if you'll kindly follow me. And now to Master Berenger. I'm here, my liege. Hugh Berenger of Maysbury, at your grace's service with all that I hold. What can you muster? Six knights, your grace, some fifty men-at-arms, half of them bowmen, and all skilled. I'm told you've been an associate of Fitzalan and Aideny, who are now holding the town against us. I grew up with them, Your Grace, certainly, and still have nothing against them, save they've chosen one path and I the other. Your change of heart comes a little late in the day. Four weeks I've been in these parts without a word from you. Such an important choice required a deal of thought if it was to be made once and for all. So I've taken my time in choosing. But here I am. Have you brought your force with you? No, three bowmen only. It seemed folly to leave a good castle unmanned, and small service to you to ask that you should feed fifty more. A young man, aren't you betrothed to Fook Aidan, his daughter? I am. Or I was. These uncertain times have forced a lot of changes. I don't even know where the girl is now, or whether the bargain still holds. Aidan, his daughter, is thought to be in hiding in the town. It would please me to have the lady in safe keeping in case my plans have to be altered. When the way is clear, you, of all people, should be able to find her for me. Your Grace, I came with that idea also in mind. Good. Should I have occasion to call you, where will you be found? At the Abbey Guest House, if they have a room. Well, until you've earned my trust, wait in attendance there against the town's fall. My liege. Hmm. Prescott? Your Grace? We'll attack tomorrow at first light. Godric, grit your teeth. This may burn a little. Uh, but it's very good for blisters. There. Is this your workshop? Yes, this is my domain. So many bottles. Mm, aye. Aye, tinctures, balms, draughts, portions, all made from the herbs in the herb garden, and each with its own particular use. Uh, by the way, this will be your sleeping place. Uh, now, don't worry. I've spoken to Brother Paul and the arrangement as his blessing. You see, many of the herbs are still in preparation and need regular attention, or they might spoil. So here you'll have your bed, and you can shut out the world, and me, until you're ready to come to us. How did you find out? Oh, child, I, I was 40 years about the world from end to end of it before I took the cowl. I know a girl when I see one. I tried so hard. <laughs> yes. Well, how would you have managed in the dortoir? Oh, hmm? boys aren't so clever. <laughs> and under these tunics, all bodies look the same. Does anyone else suspect? Why should they? And your sleeping here will arouse no suspicion. You're my boy, and I'm responsible for you. Who's trusting too far now? You don't know who I am. Why should that matter? You've left forlorn here to weather out the storm, and that's enough for me. I want to tell you, for I'm a burden to anyone who befriends me now, and likely to be a hostage when the town falls to Stephen's army, which will happen any day. Brother Catfall, I am daughter to Vesalan's chief ally and friend. My name is Goddess Aideny.
Well, Prescott? The castle's fallen, Your Grace, and mercifully with little damage. This is a stronghold you need never lose again. Good. I want no looting in the town. Oh, my liege, you've shown too much mercy in the past. You've said as much yourself. The men... No looting! Our urgent business is with the garrison of the castle. Your Grace. Mm -hmm. Adam? We've combed the fortress from battlements to dungeons, but there's no sign of either Fitzalan or Edeny. Scour the town. I want them found, and quickly. I might have searched the abbey, too. I owe the Benedictines nothing, but that can wait till later. Go. Your Grace? Now, Prescott, about the garrison. How many of them were taken? Ninety-four in arms. Have them hanged from the battlements. All of them, Your Grace? It's time to strike terror, Gilbert. Hang them all. I want them out of the world before tomorrow. I'm sorry to disturb you, Godith. Uh, were you asleep? No, come in. And oh, how could I sleep with the thought of that slaughter still going on? I have news of your father. Yes. Uh, the word is that he and Fitzalan both got clean away at the last minute and are riding hard for Wales. Thank God for that. And as for those poor souls being hanged from the battlements, Abbot Herobertus obtained Stephen's authority to give them a Christian burial. Tomorrow, after they've been cut down, the brothers will prepare them decently for the grave. Since I was once a soldier, I have been put in charge of the work. I wish I could go with you. No. These are my father's no, people. No, God, if I won't let you. Weep for the dead if you want to, but thank God that you at least are safe. Who is it? Petronella. Yes? Who's that? Me, you Beringer. Unbar the door. Hedrick, his master Hugh. Then unbar the door, woman, and let him in. Hurry, woman, hurry. Just wait but a moment, master Hugh. Hurry. I'm being as quick as I can. There. Come in, master Hugh, and welcome. Are you hunted, master Hugh? Are they close on your heels? Petronella, bar the door again. Yes. Are you in danger? Do you need a place to hide? I have no need to hide. I've sworn allegiance to the king. Then what are you doing here? Looking for Godith. Did someone send you here? No, but where else would her father place her? Who could he trust more than Petronilla, her nurse? She was here till a week ago, but she's gone. Her father sent two knights to fetch her away. I don't know where they were taking her. Edric, I'm her intended husband. I'm responsible for her. Sorry, lad, we'd like to help, but that's the way it is. And take comfort that no enemy has laid hands on her. And pray God none ever will. Well then, I must discover what I can elsewhere. Petronilla, mm. open the door for Master Hugh. Thank you both. And pray for her. We will. I won't put you in further danger, Petronilla. Edric? So much for Master Hugh. Yeah. Hunting for his bride. Mm. <laughs> yes, and a fair price he'd pay for her too. <laughs> and she a certain decoy for her father's return. Well, young Master Hugh's got his way to make with Stephen now. Uh. And God it's his best weapon. <laughs> <laughs> but let him hunt all he may, he'll not find her. Mm. I've hidden her away in the one place no sane man'll look for her. He saw me, Brother Catfield. I know he did. Who? Hugh Berringer, the man I was to marry. He saw me just now, in church. I even think he smiled. He kind of recognised you, child. A bare-legged youth squinting through a mop of hair. Oh, there's little Hugh Berringer, missus. Describe him to me. Slim build, middle height, dark complexioned. Oh, yes. Yeah. I noticed him myself. A graceful fellow. Oh, he's presentable enough, but he is of no further interest to me. Nor is he possessed of any rights in me. Circumstances alter fortunes. He had eyes only for Mistress Seward. Who's she? She's lodging at the guest house, the one next door to the mill. She was in church with Adam Cussell, King Stephen's deputy sheriff. There's little you miss either. <laughs> oh, Catfile, what if you recognised me? Well, we must take no chances. Master Barringer belongs to the King's camp. You must keep well out of his sight and we must get you safely out of here as soon as we can. Now I'm needed at the battlements. Uh, 
Have you finished, brothers? We have, my lord. Good. The sooner all this carrion's removed, the happier I shall be. My lord, how many did you say were executed at the king's orders? Ninety-four. Why? I've counted ninety-five. Oh, they're all traitors, one more or less. What does it matter? God will require an accounting. Brother, um... Uh, uh, Cadfile. Uh, Brother Cadfile, the man was taken in arms and hanged like the rest, and there's an end to it. Forgive me, my lord, but he is not like the rest. He wasn't even hanged like the rest. And his hands weren't bound like the rest. Come and see for yourself. The man who destroyed him is guilty of murder. You see, my lord, the thinness of the cord that took his life, the mark where it bit into his neck. I see. See, too, this small pit here at the nape, the mark of one end of a wooden peg, a handhold to twist and tighten the cord around his throat. Mm. You're saying he was strangled then, not hanged? And dumped here with the rest. Now, did you hang any whose hands weren't tight? None. Then here's further proof of his murder, if further proof were needed. I mean, look, look at his fingernails. Mm-hmm. You see? Both hands black with his own blood as he clawed at the cord that was killing him. His hands were free. And look at how he's dressed. He didn't take part in the battle. Uh, Brother Cadfile, they were all stripped of their armor. Yes, but he hadn't been wearing armor. He's dressed to ride light, armed only with a dagger, as this empty scabbard testifies. Oh, uh, and there's more. Indeed. It's my belief that he wasn't killed in or near the town. And your evidence for this? Well, can you recognize this herb? (laughs) Goosegrass. A queer creeping thing that grows little hooks to hold fast. You see? Even on these tiny seeds. Now look very closely, and you'll see that this one has a sharp fold. It's bent back on itself. In the middle here, in the middle of the straight stem. Hmm? Is this important? Oh, yes, my lord. For it was caught in the furrow in this poor lad's throat, broken by the cord that strangled him. Now, at this time of year, you'll find the stuff everywhere, growing richly, seeding wild. But this, now this is last year's crop, cut last autumn, dried out for use as uh, fodder or litter. You'd find it lining the floor of a a barn, say, uh, or a stable. And you believe it was in a barn or a stable that this murder was committed? I do. And not too far from the town. Or the murderer would have found it simpler to dispose of the body elsewhere. What would you have me do? Treat him fairly. Keep your peace with God and man. Send out a proclamation to the townsfolk that they are free to collect their dead without fear of penalty or disfavor. And if anyone claims this youth, then you've delivered your soul. If not... Well, at least you've done your duty. Brother Cadbar. Mistress Seward. You know me? I've seen you in church. Uh, Madam, this is no place for you. I said the same. But I insisted. And Master Beringer here insisted on accompanying me. They said you were in charge. I am. Is this the man? The one more than was counted? This is he. He was so young. Do you know him, either of you? No. Nor I. Aileen! What are you doing here? Adam! And you, Master Beringer, how could you bring her here to face so harrowing a scene? I needed to come. You know I have a brother. You were there when I told the king. You said he was in France. How can I be sure? And as often as I don't find him dead, I can hope one day to find him living. But the garrison here were all known. There's one that isn't. I've made up my mind, Adam. If I'm to have any peace, I must see them. All of them, for myself. The lady insists. Very well. Then I'll come with you, Aileen. But when you've finished, you must leave this place at once. So, you are Brother Cadvile. And you are Master Beringer. You don't look much like a monk. Too broad in the shoulder. Too deep in the chest. I was a soldier once fought at the siege of Jerusalem. A crusader, eh? Many years ago. Don't you find the cloistered life dull after all those battles? I'm not finding it dull these days, my friend. But you've no enemies left to fight. Enemies come 
in many guises. Now, you're sure you've never seen this poor man? I'm sure. You seem particularly keen to identify him. I am. Why? What's so special about him? It seems to me that he wasn't in the fight here, nor captured with the garrison, nor hanged from the battlements like the rest. He was strangled. Why should anyone hate him enough to kill? People can murder without hate. Footbats, for instance. Forest robbers. You think he was murdered for gain? He's a young squire. What could he possibly have to make him worth the killing? There are those in the world who would kill for a few coins a beggar would beg in a day. Oh, well, I must get on with my work. There are still 66 unclaimed dead here. Poor souls who must be taken back to the abbey and given decent burial. Uh, before you go, you seem a practical man. Supposing I should need your help, you wouldn't refuse it, would you, without due thought? I hope I never do anything without due thought. Hmm? <laughs> Though sometimes the thought has to shift his feet pretty briskly to keep up with the deed. And what sort of help were you seeking? Well, the king has set me rather a testing task. And sadly, I seem to be making little progress with it. Oh, dear God. Hmm? This one is Giles. I found my brother. Come, let's go to her. Sorry? I was asking where you'd like him conveyed. Oh, um, my mother's family has a tomb at St. Altman's Church here in the town. We'll have him taken there. If you'll wait but a moment, please. Master Corsell has gone to the guardroom. He thinks he's seen something that belonged to my brother that was stacked there. At the end. Master Beringer, I've no wish to sadden the rest of your day. I came with you, madam. I'll not return without you. Ah, oh, but here he comes. Aileen, see. This cloak. It must have been his. The clasp at the neck has the same design as the buckle of his belt. Yes, I know it. It's his. Let me lay it over him. It was kindly done, Adam. I shan't forget it. If only I'd known who he was, I'd have saved him for you, no matter what the cost. How? How could you have saved him and let the others die? For him, I would have found a way. Please don't blame yourself. You only did as you were ordered. And at least now, I can be sure... Good morning, Godric. Hard at work, I see. <laughs> we, we'll make a gardener of you yet. Morning, Brother Catfow. Have you been burying the dead? No, lad, not I. That task fell to others. No, I was sent for it to the King's camp. Why? Well, it seems that the King's Sheriff, Prescott, told Stephen of this unexpected hair that I've started, and... <laughs> well, I'm forgetting. You've heard nothing of all this, have you? Oh, well, what? What's the mystery? Yesterday I found an extra body among those executed at the battlements. A lad who wasn't hanged, but strangled. Murdered? Yes, child, no doubt about it. Strangled with a thin cord, then cast among the king's victims to cover up the crime. Is he known? No, but the king has charged me to bring his murderer to justice. Is he being buried with the others? No, he's in church. Lying on a bier before the altar. Let me look at him. Yes? Yes, all right. I want all who come to services to pass him by in the hope that someone may give him a name. I know him, Brother Catfile. His name? Nicholas Faintree. He was a squire of Fitzalan's. Poor Nicholas. I've known him since I was a child. But what was he doing in Shrewsbury? Fitzalan's business was all but finished here. I don't know. But there's a couple in the town who were close in all Fitzalan's plans. I'll write you a note. They'll recognize my hand and tell you all they know.
brother Cadfael. Let me begin my tale before the battle. Leave nothing out, Edric. My goddeth is safe in his care. Ah. Fitzalan knew the end was near, so he made provision for whether he lived or died, and he left his treasury here with us. To make sure it reached Empress Moor. Mm. And we fixed a signal. If any of Fitzalan's party came with a certain token, private to us who knew, we should deliver the treasury to them, and they would convey it with all speed over the border and into Wales. And they came early next day, two of them, just before the assault on the castle. Mm. Two squires, young Nicholas Faintry being one. They almost left it too late. Mm. By this time, we'd moved the valuables out into the garden I have at Frankwell, so there'd be no bridge to cross if we needed to move at short notice. Mm -hmm. Now, there was nothing we could do in broad daylight, so I took the two lads to Frankwell and left them in my barn, with instructions to hide there with their horses until it was dark. And the treasury? We packed that into two pairs of saddlebags and hid it in a cavity in a dry well nearby. Do you know if it's still there? As soon as life returned to normal, I looked. It's gone. Ah. We hoped they'd got clean away, but if poor Nicholas was murdered... Ah. I suppose it was enough to tempt any man. <gasps> he seems such a nice young lad. <sighs> but who can tell what lies behind a decent face? You think Faintry was murdered by this fellow? Who escaped keeping the treasure for himself? What else is one to think? Did you know the lad? We'd never seen him before. His name was Torold Blund. A Saxon name? And looked it too. Blue eyes, hair, the colour of sand. But he's your murderer, Brother Catfile. No doubt about it. Well, uh, my thanks to you both. I must be on my way. Oh, uh, there's one more thing I should tell you before you go. Uh -huh. uh, since you're taking care of Goddith. Uh, what's that? Well, about two o'clock in the afternoon, after the King's men had taken over the town, Hugh Beringer came. All concerned for Goddith and asking where he might find her. Ah. Oh, we told him nothing, of course. No. no. But after he'd gone, Petronella went on about how well we'd hidden the girl, even touching on the plans to move Fitzalan's gold. In a roundabout sort of manner. Aye. And as she talked, I thought I heard a sound outside. Like the scuff of a boot on the cobbles. We looked at once, of course. But there was no one to be seen. You think that Beringer might have overheard? Uh, I wouldn't put it past him. He moves like a lynx, that man. So, Brother Cadvile, this is where you spend your more peaceful hours. The weeds will grow, Master Beringer, even in God's garden. A far cry from harvesting dead men. How long had you been standing there? A while. My ears are keen, but I never heard a sound. That boy who was murdered, you found out his name in the end. How? No one in the town seemed to know him. All questions get their answers in time. And all searches are bound to find? You have no help today. There's corn to be harvested in the field down by the river. Godric is helping with that. He can handle a sickle. Oh, yes, yes, quite well. Well, I trust you have sound judgment in the matter. It would be sad if young Godric came home short of a foot. <clears throat> yes, sir. Brother Catford, sorry to disturb you at supper. Yes, sir. Godric, what is it? I found a wounded man down by the river. A Saxon by his hair and eyes. He's been there a night and a day. He's in need of attention. Does anyone else know about this? No, nobody saw him but me. He's lying deep among the bushes. I gave him a drink of water from my bottle and told him I'd bring help as soon as I could. He called me Ganymede. Right. Well, hide some meat and bread in your tunic while I fetch salve and bandages. Then we'll be on our way. Who's there? It's me. Ah, oh, Ganymede. 
good lad. I just as a friend to us both. God bless you, brother. Friends I sorely need. Can you rise and go? <laughs> Not far. I've lost a lot of blood, most of it into the river. I'll carry you then. Come put your arms around my neck. <laughs> All right. I'm too great a load. Do as you're told. <laughs> Where are you taking me? The old mill. You'll be safe there. It's only a few minutes away. <laughs> Put him down here. Hmm? I found some dry sacks he can lie on. Ah, good for you. Oh. Right. There. Oh. That's right. Now, let's take a look at you. Oh, I'm Brother Cadval, by the way. And as Welsh as Dewey Sant. Oh, and this boy of mine is Godric. Trust us both, or neither? I trust you both. Good. Uh, Godric, uh, uh, help me with his jerkin. I want to see the shoulder. I'll have trouble paying my shot. Oh, our charges are quite low. A straight story will buy such hospitality as we are offering. Ah, an arrow did this? Hmm. Yes, I couldn't stop it bleeding. Uh, thank God it isn't serious. Where are your other wounds? There's a sword cut in my thigh. I'll look at that in a moment. Godric, look, I'll, I'll need some water. River water? Well, it's better than none. Search around, find something to carry it in. Yes. Huh? Now then, uh, your thigh. There. Ah. Ah, well, this isn't such a deep gash either. But you have a rich variety of bruises. I'm lucky to be alive. Who was hunting you? The king's men. Who else? And still will be. Unless they believe me drowned. Then they'll be searching for your body. The seven always yields up its dead. No, 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 keep still. I owe you a name, at least. I think I know your name already. It's Torald Blund. How on earth Never you... mind about that now. Now, let's get this thigh bound up. Hmm, oh, it's clean enough. It's knitting already. Huh. Now, tell me your story. Starting where Edric Flesher left you and Nicholas Faintry with Fitzalan's treasury at the barn in Frankwell. Are you some sort of wizard? Time is short now. Go on. We recovered the treasury from the dry well and rode as soon as it was dark. But when we reached a stretch of woodland, Nick's horse fell lame. He'd picked up a caltrop and was cut to the bone. Caltrop? We're on a forest path away from the field of battle. It was a caltrop. The spike was embedded in the hoof. I know. I wrenched it out. And what did you do? Well, the poor beast was founded. He could go, but not far and not loaded. So we agreed that Nick should hide in a nearby woodman's hut while I rode with both horses to the farm of a man named Ulf. He's distant kin on my mother's side. And the treasury? Went with me. Ulf gave me a fresh horse. I transferred Nick's half of the load to the new nag and rode back to the hut. Uh -huh. I thought Nick would be looking out for me, but he wasn't. That made me uneasy. So I tethered the horses with a single knot, to be off fast, if need be, and went into the hut. The door was half open. It was pitch black inside. I went in cautiously, but I fell over him, Nick, in the middle of the floor. I sensed at once he was dead. I heard the dry fodder rustle behind me. I threw up my right arm, from instinct, I suppose. And the man's cord went round my wrist as well as my throat. Yes, as I can see the marks that it made. I lashed out in fright and jerked the cord out of his hands. I brought him down. We wrestled in the hay, each trying for the other's throat. Then by chance my hand struck a half-rotten board that was lying loose on the floor. And I hit him with it, two-handed. Good for you. I doubt I did him any lasting damage. But it knocked him witless long enough for me to run. And run I did. Made off with the horses like a hunted hare. Well, there's no shame in that. I didn't get very far. The king's patrols were thick as bees in a swarm, and they were stopping everything that moved. Two days I hid up in a copse. Then Thursday, after nightfall, I tried again, taking another road. And that was when they saw me. They had me trapped. I had only one way to run, towards the river. I took the saddlebags from both horses turned the beasts loose and ran. But the pursuit was close now, and one of the fellows gave me this slash in the thigh. Which I've dressed for you now, as best that I can. Now cover yourself decently with this blanket. I look at your shoulder again. So, it was then that you took to the water? Yes. 
Saddlebags and all. And got this clout from an arrow? Yes. I went under and the seven carried me downstream. Finally, I dragged myself ashore and crawled into the bushes, afraid to stir. That's where Godric found me. And that's the truth of it. Not the whole truth. Hmm? But Godric found no saddlebags on you. Brother Cadval, you'll think me ungrateful after all you've done, but... Well, now I'm sole custodian of the treasury and I... I understand. I understand. A trust is a trust. For your better peace of mind, the talk is that Fitzalan and Aidney both got clean away. Oh, good. And what of Nick? He's with God. We're burying him tomorrow within the abbey. He'll have a prince's tomb. There. Ah, that's better. I've got some water. Ah, good. Now, bear that wound in his shoulder. How do you feel? Weak. Uh, he'll feel much better once he's slept. Now then, friend, I want you to drink this strong cordial of my own brewing. It helps keep wounds from festering and eases the heart. Here, let me help you. Thank you, young Ganymede. Godric will look in on you tomorrow as often as he can. I have other matters to attend to. But I'll come down in the evening and dress your wounds again. In the meantime, we've uh, brought you some meat and cheese and bread and uh, a flask of wine. Thank you. If... If there's any water left... Here. Thank you. Oh. He's asleep already. Well, child, it's time to go. We mustn't be late for Compline. Who is he, Brother Cadfile? And why are they hunting him? I'll tell you as we go. He's very handsome. His eyes are cornflower blue. He looks so pale and he's eaten nothing. <laughs> He'll be ravenous in the morning. <laughs> who was Ganymede? A beautiful youth who was cupbearer to Jove and much loved by him. Oh. Uh, but some say it's another name for Hebe. And who's Hebe? Another cupbearer to Jove and much loved by him. But a beautiful maiden. Ah. <laughs> Come along, my child. Or we'll be in trouble with the prior. Boy. Madam. I'm Aileen Seawood. I'm looking for Brother Cadvile. He's gone to borrow the abbot's mule. He has duties the other side of the town. What's your name? Godric, madam. I'm his assistant. You've been crying, Godric. A little. It was a great honour for Master Faintree to be buried in the Abbey Church. No doubt Brother Cadvile's doing. I don't think the abbot required much persuading. I attended the funeral service with Master Berenger. I saw you. We buried my brother Giles yesterday at St. Altman's. He was one of the castle garrison, hanged with the others from the battlements. I'm sorry. There was no shame attached. He made his choice and stood by it to the end. Anyway, these are my brother's clothes. Jacket, hose and cloak. Well, he no longer needs them, and they're still good. So someone may be glad of them. Perhaps you'd ask Brother Cadval to dispose of them, however he thinks best. friend. Spare something for a poor cripple and God will reward you. I will indeed. And better than a small coin too. <laughs> no doubt you feel the cold even on these summer nights. Oh, I do. Though sometimes if I'm lucky I'm allowed near the King's Guard post by the city gate. I can enjoy the glow of their fire there. Here's something even better. A cloak? Oh, that'll keep the winter chill away. Oh. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. How often have I wished the good God had sent me such a cloak? 
Then say a prayer for a gentle lady who sends it to you by my hand. <laughs> God be with you, friend. <laughs> a cloak. Lame husband with a fine cloak. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so. so, young sir, I find you both together. <clears throat> and how is our patient this evening? Brother Catfile? Yeah, Godric? He knows hmm? that I'm a girl. Ah. Um, how did he make the discovery? We wrestled. Wrestled? Yes, well, he thought he was fit enough to travel, and I told him he wasn't. You goaded me. You should have had the good sense to do as you were bid, or at least the courtesy to be gentle with your friends. I wasn't rough, exactly. Oh, you hurled yourself on top of In me. In fun, that's all, and... Anyway, you asked God for God is, Torold. No, that's enough. <laughs> so, he knows you're a girl. And what else does he know? Everything. And he's told me the only thing he didn't tell you last night, where the treasury is hidden. And now he wants to tell you. Well, well go on, Torold, tell him. It's still in the saddlebags, hidden on a mooring chain under the first arch of the stone bridge, down under the water out of sight, as if no one's found it. No, no, we should have heard. Brother Cadval... I must get it safer to Fitzalan in France without any more loss of time. And I'll take Godith with me and deliver her safe to her father. Is that what you want, Godith? Yes, as soon as he's fit to travel. Right then, uh, well, let's see how his shoulder is progressing. We'll unwind his bandage, Godith, until it sticks. Now, uh, let me tell you what I've been doing while you two have been uh, swearing allegiance. What? Confirming all that you've told me. I visited your kinsman, Alf, and uh, he bore out your story to the last detail. Seems he even found several more caltrops strewn across the path by the hut. Caltrops? A martial cruelties, my child, for scattering under the hooves of cavalry. Strewn on a woodland path? Well, why should anyone do that? To halt us by the hut. What else? Ow! I told you that it would stick. Well, I didn't mean to hurt you, Torald. I tried to ease it off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me. Yes, sir. Uh... Someone knew in advance what you and Nicholas were about and the road that you take and laid his trap, waiting for you to spring it. Well, young man, you're a credit to us both. It's healing well. I'm afraid you'll have a scar there for the rest of your life. Now, hold steady. This may burn. It's my belief the king got wind of the matter and sent some of his men secretly to get the treasury. Ow! They say he's desperate for money. Perhaps. But there's evidence of only one man. One man attacked you in the hut. One horse was left to graze nearby. Large and well shod. Well, the marks were clear to see. No. No, the thief wasn't there to fill King Stephen's coffers. But was bent on his own enrichment. Now then, lad. Is this yours? Mine? No. No, Nicholas Faintry's neither? No, that didn't belong to a poor squire. Let me see. It's a gemstone of some sort. A topaz, mounted in a silver claw. I'd say it was broken off the hilt of a dagger. And a very fine weapon, too. Where did you find it? In the hut, where Nicholas was murdered. Embedded in the floor. Well, it, if it isn't mine or Nick's, it must have been his, mustn't it? The murderers. It's the obvious conclusion. It must have snapped off against the ground as we struggled. Then it will lead us to him. Find the dagger, and we find the murderer. Nick was a good friend to me, Brother Cadfile. And I should stay to avenge him, but... You have more pressing duties. I understand. You'll help us escape, won't you? Nothing simpler, child. All I have to do is conjure two good horses out of empty air, retrieve your hidden treasure for you, and see you safely into Wales. I said you were a wizard. Oh, yes, well, I... What is it? Nothing. My ears are playing me tricks. Well, now, Godric, we must be getting back to Vespers. Or oh, Antoro. Yes? Here's a poniard for you. It served me well in Jerusalem. May it protect you now. Thank you. I should have parted with it before, but... Well, it's good to give it to someone who needs it and won't disgrace it. When we were in the mill, you heard something, didn't you? Possibly... 
You think someone overheard what we said? Perhaps. Well, who? A very fair evening, brother. M Master Berringer. What brings you to this part? I was enjoying the evening here by the river. And you? Brought in all the corn, have we, Godric? All that we have here. Uh, uh, Godric, uh, save my legs, lad. Uh, run ahead and stir that lotion I've been brewing. Yes, sir. A most biddable lad. Yes, uh, he serves me well. Sir, uh, I am bound for Vespers. Oh, so I'm am bound. I. May we walk together? Gladly. I'm in need of your skills and knowledge. Oh? Uh -huh. Yes. I asked you the other day if you would give a request of mine fair consideration. You agreed? I did. Well, what I had in mind then was no more than a rumoured threat. Now it's a real one. I have reason to know that the King is already making plans to move on, and he's about to issue orders to commandeer for the army's use all good horses, no matter who owns them. Even the Abbey stables won't be exempt. Mm. Well, that'll be bad news for Brother Pryor. It's bad news for me, too. I have four good horses in the Abbey stables, and I have no intention of allowing them all to be drafted for the King's army. A two I can afford. How does this concern me, my lord? I turn to you for practical help. You know all this countryside. Is there a place of safety not too far away where two of my best horses can lie up for a few days until this roundup is over? Two of your best horses, you say? Two, that's right. I'll not begrudge the King the others. Yes, I do know of a place. In the Long Forest. We could ride out there together at night and uh, make the return journey on foot before morning. Excellent. Then uh, show me the way tonight. Brother Cadvile, you lived in the world all those years and never thought to marry? I did once think about it. And a very fair woman, too. Rashildas, her name was. <laughs> She'd have grandchildren by now. What went wrong? Ah, uh, I was in the East too long. She gave up waiting and married another. Small blame to her. And in the East? Well, there were women there, too. And you were a young crusader. Hmm? Makes you wonder, does it? A little. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder about you. Why? I can't quite make you out. You're secretive, enigmatic, a natural conspirator. One knows another. When the king leaves Shrewsbury, will you go with him? Well, that depends on him. Would you credit it, the man mistrusts me still. Well, that's what comes of being secretive and enigmatic. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rumour going the rounds. Yeah? Uh, what's that? A few nights ago, there was a fellow hunted into the river, said to be a squire of Fitzalan's. They say an archer got him in the shoulder and he went down. Next day, when they caught a riderless horse, a good saddle horse, they naturally took it to be his. And? Then, if you'll believe it, they rounded up another riderless horse running loose up on the heathland. And what did they make of that? They're thinking the youth was a single bodyguard sent out from the castle with two horses when the assault came to pick up Aidany's daughter from wherever she was hidden and escape with her across the border into Wales. So, if this was the same youth who was in the river, and since both horses have been found, they assume the attempt failed. I see. Which means she's still in hiding somewhere in Shrewsbury. And now they'll be looking for her more eagerly than ever. Whoa, hey, somebody. Hey. Ah, oh, well, we're here. What is this place? An old grange the Abbey once used. But since the times have grown unchancy, we've withdrawn our sheep and cattle and just kept two lay brothers in the house. Uh, who's there? A uh, brother Cadvile. Uh, oh, that's one of them, uh, Brother Anselm. Uh, the other, Brother Lewis, won't be far away. They heard us approaching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <coughs> brother Lewis, 
<laughs> you can hear an old blink at ten paces. <laughs> ah, here they come. <clears throat> what, old comrade, is uh, it you? It is. Look, Brother Lewis, it's Brother Cadfile come to see us. Oh, it's a pleasure to see your known face. Uh, but, but we hardly expected you in the middle of the night. You, I had my knife at the ready. Uh, <laughs> uh, where's your errand? Oh, uh, here, with you. Uh, yes, my lord here asked you to give stabling to these two beasts for a few days. Oh. Oh, and keep them out of the public eye. Willingly. Oh, it's a long while <laughs> since the stable here had such beauties in it. <laughs> Indeed. You must surrender them to no one but myself or Brother Carlyle. That's understood, my lord. <laughs> Come along then, my lovely. Oh, we both love a fine horse. Come along. Come along. Right, my lord Beringer. We've safely disposed of your horses. Now, are you ready for the long walk home? <laughs> So, Brother Cadval, you think this Master Beringer overheard what we were saying yesterday? Well, I'm sure of it. Certainly that you and Godith here are planning to escape into Wales with the treasury. But I don't understand. Why should Hugh, of all people, provide us with two good saddle horses for the journey? That doesn't make sense. I lay awake half the night thinking about that, too. And? Several possibilities occurred to me. Uh, shall I start with the worst one first? Go on. Beringer is Faintree's murderer. He somehow got wind of the fact that Torold and Faintry were escaping that night with the treasury, set his trap and waited in ambush in the hut. But who'd have told him? Well, only members of Fitzalan's council knew of the plan. And Edric Flesher. But his allegiance is beyond question. And theirs. Most of them gave their lives in that battle. All I know is that Beringer is one of nature's conspirators. Had he failed in his purpose the first time, he'd be scheming to try again. Now, suppose at this time... He sees a means of gaining three prizes in one. Three? Why? First, to obtain the treasure. For his own enrichment. Oh, yes. And second, to place Aidan's daughter in King Stephen's hands as a hostage against her father's return. And third? To dispose of the one surviving witness to his earlier crime. Me. Exactly. And what better way of doing it? Than providing us with two horses, allowing us to recover the treasury from its hiding place in the river and waiting where the horses are stable till I and Godith and the treasury fall neatly into his hands. At one stroke. It has the ring of truth about it. But for one thing. And that is? I have no great love for Hugh Berenger, but a murderer. If he can provide the king with the treasury and you two as hostages, his favoured place with Stephen would be assured. And we are losers either way. However, there is another possibility. What's that? That Beringer is a man of honour who's prepared to let you both go, provided he can recover the treasure for the king. I'd dearly like to believe it. Yes, yes, me too. The question is, are we prepared to stake our lives on it? Have we any choice? No, not really. When Stephen's men come to collect their tithe of food and horses, and they'll surely do so soon, uh, they'll leave no stone unturned. You must both be away by then. Brother Cadval. Much though I love Godith and hold my own life dear, I have a sworn duty to protect that treasure. You surely can't expect me to surrender it without a fight. I don't. What? I think we must play Master Beringer at his own game. And if we succeed, you can be off into Wales with both your treasures. And he'll be left empty-handed. You have a plan? It's not without its dangers. Tell us. Well, Beringer knows as well as we do that time is running short and that we can only move under cover of darkness. He'll be watching closely. Now, since you must both remain in hiding, he'll expect me to recover the treasure. So, wherever I am, there, depend upon it, he will be too. Tonight, I shall row to the stone bridge, and he will watch me pull the treasure out of the river, or so it will appear, and walk with it to the Grange, where I shall leave it with Brother Anselm and Brother Lewis. Once Beringer is safely out of the way, you two will take a small boat from where I'll have hidden it among the bushes, recover the real treasure, which you, Godith, will hide in a sack in my workshop until we're ready to make our escape tomorrow evening. Now, do you think you can do that? Of course. Uh, there's one thing. You'll need a load to carry with you to the Grange, which Beringer will think is the treasure. Well, that's a job for you. Wrap some objects in a blanket and uh, anything with a bit of weight. But I also want you to put in some other things, too. I have them here in my pouch.
Who's there? Brother Cadvile. Oh, God bless you, brother. What's this? Two visits in as many nights? I've got something more to put into your safekeeping. Oh, it, it looks heavy. Oh, it is, uh, Brother Lewis. It is. Believe me. It's soaking wet, too. Here, I'll take it into the house. Oh, holy saints, what have you got in here? It's enough for you to know that I hope to come again tomorrow night with two friends to collect both it and the horses. Did you come alone? Why, are we being observed? I believe so. Good. That was my intention. What? I'll explain later. Uh, come along, then. Let's get the bundle stowed. Right. I need to be back in time for Matins. Make fast the gates. And see to it that no one enters or leaves the abbey. What is this noise? Good morning, Brother Pryor. By what right do you disturb the peace of the abbey? We come in King Stephen's name and require a tithe of your stores for His Grace's necessary provision, also all of your serviceable horses. But surely the abbey is exempt from such a tithe. His Grace is of no mind to extend any privileges to the abbey. Well, no doubt we shall weather it. I'm also commanded to search everywhere for the girl, Godith, daughter of the traitor Edene, who is thought to be still in hiding. A girl within these precincts? Hardly. These are my orders, Brother Pryor. I'm sorry. Then make your search. Oh, we shall. And thoroughly. You men, come with me. Who's there? It's me, Torold. Come in. The king's men are everywhere. Where's Godif? I don't know. What? I overslept a little, I'm sorry. After my exertions of last night, and by the time I got here to warn her, she was gone. Where? I've no idea. But, Toro, she must be safe, or they'd have called off the search by now. And the treasure? You left it here last night. Just as you instructed. Then she must have taken it with her. But where? Search the Quickly. Slip under that bedding. Come with me. And lie still. Open up in the king's name. Brother Cadvile. Well, well. Master Cursell. You're up bright and early this morning. Search if you wish. Though I doubt you'll find any horses. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Cadvile, what happened outside the town walls? The hangings? Yes. I tried to intercede, but there was nothing I could do. The king was intransigent. I understand. There are some things a soldier shouldn't be called upon to do. I assure you I spent as little time as possible at the place of execution, but led my men off to search the town for Fitzalan and Edney. The whole ugly business was lent dignity only by your presence and that of Mistress Seward. Well, thank you. There was little enough that I could do. I believe the king has charged you with the task of finding the boy's murderer. He has. Then I wish you good fortune. His death should be avenged. Well, I've seen all I want here. <laughs> oh, good, good. Uh, you won't be disturbed again. All right. You can come out now. <sighs> I couldn't get my breath under there. I thought your last moment had come. Me too. For the third time this morning. They started combing the riverbank at first light. Six men and an officer riding. Then they came towards the old mill and I had to make a run for it. That was the first time. And the second? A little later, as I swam the brook. I could have sworn the officer, the same officer, had seen me then. It even seemed he'd lifted his bridle hand to me a fraction. But I looked again, once I was safe across and hidden in a haystack. And he turned and was riding away. What did he look like? This officer. I only saw him from a distance, but he was thin-faced and he... Of course. It was Berenger, wasn't it? I should have recognised him from last night. And he was wishing you Godspeed. <laughs> oh, take heart, Torold. It seems all is still running as we planned. Except... Yes. Where's Godif? Brother 
Brother Cadvale! Hmm? Brother Cadvale! Miss Eyes, I beg you, let me pass! Brother Cadvale! Mr. Seward! I need to talk to you! There are soldiers at every gate. How did you get in? I told them I had permission from Adam Corsell to attend Mass, but it's you I seek, and urgently. What is it, my child? Goddess is safe. She's at my house. She came at first light by boat, paddled down the Millbrook, knocked on my door, and begged for shelter. And you took her in? The king's enemy? I doubt that Stephen would have thought better of me had I given her up to him, and I'm sure that God would not. Have you a message for her? Yes, daughter. Tell her to have boat and bundle ready, and we'll come for her after dark. Then she's safe. Yes, thank God. With Aileen Seward. You breed fine women here in Salop. I know. Now listen, the soldiers have finished their search, so rest in here. Get as much sleep as you can. And you? I must go back to the Dortois with the others. I'll come for you when the time is right. Then what? We can't just march out of the gatehouse. There's no need. There's a small parish door that opens onto the foregate. It's never closed. I'll let you out there when the time comes. What about the porter? Oh, you won't pay much attention to a solitary citizen making late for home. And once I'm clear... It's only a short walk to Aileen Seward's house. The boat is hidden there. Collect Godith and the treasure and row back to where the water flows from the mill pond and into the brook. I'll be waiting for you there. Then it's on foot to the Grange. Brother Cadpile, is it you? It is. There, Brother Anselm, I told you. He said it would be tonight. I'll fetch the horses. Well, Brother Lewis. I heard you coming. <laughs> we are still being observed. Good. Things grow rough your way, so we've heard. Uh, rough enough. Mm. I'd wish my friends were out of it. Uh, most of all, these two. Oh, Brother Lewis, this is Fuke Hayden, his daughter, and this is Fitzalan's squire. Um, now, we've put some food together for their journey, and uh, Brother Anselm's fetching the horses now. They're both saddled and ready. I thank you with all my heart. Oh, God love you, child. What should a decent man do when a young woman's threatened but see her safe out of trouble, <laughs> and her young man with her? Have you got the baggage? Uh, yes, I have it here. And here are the horses. Ah, excellent, excellent. <laughs> oh, well, Godith, Thorold. It's time that you were on your way. Yes. And give my love to Wales. Halt as you stand! What? Turn around slowly and keep your hands visible for the lady's sake. My men have their arrows trained on her. Master Beringer? What are you doing here? Calling the tune. And what sort of tune do you have in mind for me? Are you going to stand on your rights and marry me? I'm tempted. You've improved greatly from the fat little girl I remember. But no. You give me to the king, then, to buy his favour? No. And if it needs saying for your own comfort, I have no intention of setting the hounds on your champion's trail, either. You mean it? There are the horses. Ride as soon as you please. But that bundle Cadvile is sitting on, that I'll keep. Oh, it's... Uh, it's yours, Master Beringer. You won it fairly. <laughs> what else can I say? We can go, then. And I suggest quickly, if you wish to be in Wales by daybreak. I've mistaken you, Hugh. Wish me well. With all my heart. Now, mount and Godspeed. You, friend, I ask your pardon. I don't know your name. I'm Torald Blund, a squire of Fitzalan's. Well, take good care of it, Torald. I will. And Brother Cadvile, I owe you everything. If there's anything owing, repay it to Godith. <laughs> and see you bring her safe to her father. I will. Goodbye, Brother Cadvile. I shall miss you, child. <laughs> Farewell. You, come on. She'll never come to her father a virgin. Ah, oh, there are priests enough between here and Normandy. It's my belief that she'll come to him a wife. You know the girl better than I do. Pity. Why did you let her go? She was betrothed to me once. I had to see her into safety. And if we put up a fight? I'd have looked the biggest fool in Christendom, for I'd never have harmed the girl. You knew the treasure was here at the Grange. Why didn't you just remove it and make sure of it? Now, what would have been the fun of that? No, Cadvile, this way was more satisfying. I have the gold, and I've made my peace with Godith. I couldn't let her go to France, believing me her enemy. So, at last the game is over. And you, it seems, have won. No hard feelings? None. <laughs> I sensed there was no real mischief in the air tonight. <laughs> God be with you, Brother Cadvile. Come again to see us soon. Yeah, we will. 
Right then, Cadwell. My mount is sturdy enough to bear a second passenger. Ride with me to the Abbey, and we'll take this bundle to your hut and open it at our leisure. I trust you've no objection. Uh, no, friend. Uh, none at all. Here we are. Oh, God. Oh, it's heavy. You carried it on your back to the Grange. I did. I wouldn't have believed it possible had I not watched you every step of the way. Now, let's see what we have here. Would you uh, care to test my wine? Oh, gladly. Oh, these nuts are stiff. Oh, it's been in the river, hasn't it? Uh, this is made from pears. We had an excellent crop last year. I think you'll find it to your liking. Oh, thank you. Here. I drink to your better success against all opponents but Hugh Berenger. Yes, it is good. Now, nearly done. There. What's this? A few oddments young Torold put together. I'll uh, fill your glass again. And I've been commiserating with you. I drink to your better success with all opponents. Uh, but, uh, Cadvile. <laughs> How did you do it? I mean, I watched you closely all the while. That's what I was counting on. If you can't shake off surveillance, the only thing is to turn it to your own advantage. And the real treasury? We hid it in a gnarled oak not far from the Grange. And by now I hope it's in Wales. Uh, no hard feelings. No, no, none. These, uh, these oddments, what are they? A man's clothes? And what poor Nick Faintry was wearing when he was strangled. Oh, I begin to understand. You wanted to spring these on me when I was unprepared, thinking I might recoil from my own guilt. Shame, Cadvile. Did you think I'd commit murder for trash? It's Alan's treasury. Trash? You can't read it, eat it, make love to it. You can buy the favour of kings with it. Uh, true. And when the chance offered... Uh, but, well, losing it's no great matter. It was a good fight while it lasted. Let's see. No, there's nothing I recognise here. Unless... The topaz. You know it? Well, hardly that. But I was with Aileen as she prepared her brother's body for burial. She spoke of something that should have been there that wasn't. A dagger that was hereditary in her family. This might well be the stone that tipped the hilt. Where did you get it? I found it trampled into the earth floor in the hut where Faintry died. It wasn't his, or Torold's, or... Oh, for God's sake, Cadwell, you're not thinking Aileen's brother murdered Faintry. Has she to bear that, too? You're forgetting your sense of time. Giles Seward couldn't have murdered Faintry, for he was dead several hours before. No, it's rather that whoever killed Faintry at first robbed the body of Giles Seward and was wearing the dagger that he'd stolen when he set up his ambush in the hut. Which means the murderer was present at the executions. Aye, but left before the grisly work was ended, for it went on into the night. And by then he was lurking in ambush at Frankwell. Can you name him, Brother Cadvile? I begin to have an inkling. But how do we get proof? Cadfile. Ah, Brother Pryor. There's news. 
King Stephen's army is about to march south towards Worcester. The king himself, with his personal guard, is to spend two nights here in the castle before he follows after. It seems he is disposed to forget any remaining grudges, for this Tuesday evening he has invited myself and Abbot Herbert to his table. Excellent news, brother. Uh, but how does this concern me? It seems a servant is required, and I have persuaded Father Abbot that this task should fall to you. You cope with the matter of the mass burial, even talked with the king concerning the unlicensed death. It's only sensible that you should be on hand to be questioned at need. I'll do it gladly. Good. Now, come with me. Uh, there are some errands to be run in the town. Master Flesher. Brother Cadfire. The town puts on a festival fest. Yes. <laughs> Not so much in the king's honor, though. More to celebrate his early departure. <laughs> <laughs> what news of Goddith? She's safe away. Oh, tell Petronilla that I'll call and see her soon. God bless you, brother. <laughs> Spare something for a poor crippled brother and... Hey, I remember you. You're the brother who bought me his cloak, aren't you? And uh, has it done you good service? Well, it surely has. And I've prayed for the lady, as you asked. But, brother... Yes? I feel sorely troubled. Why? Well, the man whose cloak this was. He's dead, isn't he? He is. Well, I fear I bear some guilt. For I saw the man living with this cloak about him the night before the town fell. And I was cold, and I wish the good Lord had sent me such a cloak to keep me warm. Oh, then soon after, you came and dropped it in my arms. Now, brother, what if I prayed the man into his grave for the sake of a cloak? Friend, you rest easy. His death isn't at your door. He was one of Fitzalan's garrison, executed with the other survivors when the castle fell. Fitzalan's man? Yes, indeed. And no sacrifice of yours could have saved him. But how can that be? I saw him enter and leave the king's camp that night. Are you sure of that? Aye, he was wearing this same cloak, with this same clasp at the neck. And I saw him come like a shadow among the bushes. And when they challenged him, he spoke up in a voice that shook with fear, asking to be taken to their officer, for he had something to tell to the king's advantage. What then? Well, they took him into the tent, and when he came out again, he looked more sure of himself. And I heard him say he must go back into the town to avoid suspicion. Mm -hmm. As he passed, he, he pressed a groat into my hand and begged me to say a prayer for him, which I did. But, brother, I'm still troubled about this cloak. Aileen's brother a traitor? There's no escaping it. As if she hadn't had sorrow enough. You love her, don't you, lad? Yes, from the very first. Then try to feel pity for her brother. Pity? He was a poor, frightened boy who'd reached his breaking point. And we should grieve for him. He betrayed his friends to buy his own life. What with? Eh? What do you suppose he had to offer in exchange? What message did he take that night to the king's camp that it was to the king's advantage? Of course, Fitzalan's gold. He was one of Fitzalan's officers. He'd have attended the council. He'd have known when and how it was to be moved. And what way would they ride but the shortest? Through the forest, past the woodman's hut? Enough to tempt someone in the king's camp to act on the information himself for his own gain. Ah, I bet he couldn't let Giles live, or the truth was bound to come out. So, when the king ordered the wholesale executions, he made sure that Giles was slaughtered with the rest. So Giles fell victim to a treachery even greater than his own. Yes, you're right, Cadvile, I'm sure of it. I was speaking the other day to one of the Flemings who was present at the executions from first to last, and he told me that one young man was pulled from the ranks, incredulous, screaming that he'd been promised his life, that they should send and ask... Adam Corsell? I learned no name. You're Fleming. Did he notice the dagger? Was Giles wearing it when they strung him up? He was, for my man had an eye to it himself. Only when he came later to get it, it was gone. Aye. Corsell had taken it, and was wearing it later that day when he strangled Faintry. Why do you say so certainly, Corsell? He was at the battlements, but left early, so he had the opportunity. Also, I recollect the horror that fell on him when Aileen came to collect her dead. He said, if I'd known, I'd have saved him, no matter what the cost. Hmm. I wonder what he's done with the dagger. Kept it, hidden it, got rid of it. 
We need it. I mean, that's for certain. I mean, it's our only proof. Without it, we can never bring Corsell to book. Uh, Cadvile, there's to be no trial. Huh? No trial. It's enough that Aileen mourns her brother. We must let her go on thinking he held to his choice, however mistaken, with honour to the end. Well, I understand your preoccupation, and I sympathise with it, but, but Nicholas Faintry mustn't lie uneasy for want of justice. Nor will he. That I promise. For Aileen's honour is both our weakness and our strength. Corsell wants high office with the king, and he wants Aileen as well. Where would he stand with either if the truth came out? No, he'll be as loath as we are for this murder to come to trial. What are you scheming? You'll see. At the king's table. Tonight. <laughs> I'm loath to spoil your supper. There's a matter on which I beg you'll hear me and do right. Speak, Master Berenger. I demand justice on one here in the company who has stolen from the dead and committed murder. I stand on my charges to prove them with my body. Here is my gauge. What is this thing? The tip of a dagger hilt. The dagger to which it belongs was formerly in the possession of Giles Seward, a brother to the Lady Aileen Seward. Uh, Giles Seward was among those who garrisoned this castle against your grace and have paid the price for it. Yes. I say it was taken from his dead body, an act unworthy of knight or gentleman. That is the first offence. And the second? The murder of which your grace was told by Brother Cadvile after the count of the dead was made. What is this stone to do with that murder? Your grace, Brother Cadvile, who is present here tonight will testify that he found it, broken off and trodden into the ground in the struggle, at the place the murder was committed. Brother Cadvile will take an oath, as I do, that the man who stole the dagger is the same who killed Nicholas Faintry, and that he left behind him, unnoticed, this proof of his guilt. Will Brother Cadvile step forward? Your Grace? Can you confirm finding this stone in the place where the killing befell? I can. And whose word do we have that it came from Seawood's dagger? The word of Lady Aileen herself. She recognised it at once. Very well. Then I'll accept that the thief is also a murderer. Name him. I name Adam Corsell. Oh, Adam? <laughs> There's never a thread to connect him with the deed. I humbly thank your grace. My Lord King, I have proof positive of his guilt. This weapon was delivered into my possession a few short minutes ago. I pray you to match dagger and stone together with your own hands. Yes. There's no doubt they belong. How did you come by this? I was granted permission to distribute such morsels as were left of the banquet among the needy of the town. And at the gatehouse, I chanced upon a boy. He was carving some meat into small pieces, and he was using that knife. Uh, may I call him forward? Do so. Uh, come here, boy. Come on, no one will harm you. Where did you find the dagger? I fished it out of the river. And the sheath, too. I had to dive, but I found them. You didn't steal them? No, sir, they're really mine. The owner didn't want them. I saw him throw them away. Into the river? Yes, my lord. The same night the bodies were being carried down to the abbey. You're sure of this? I am. And would you know this man if you saw him again? I would indeed. Is he in this hall with us now? He is, my lord. That was the man. Corsell. Adam Corsell. Your grace, the child is lying. At whose instigation? Brother Cadfile? To what end? Then he's mistaken. I am not the man. I never had that thing in my possession. Never even saw it till now. I deny all that's been said against me. Then put it to the proof tomorrow. So be it. Very well. At nine of the clock, after mass, outside the town gate, on foot with swords. Is it agreed? Agreed. agreed. I'll advance, gentlemen. You. Oh, good morning, Brother Cadvile. I knew you wouldn't fail me. I'm excused all duties until the matter is resolved. Uh, that may take some time. Ah, yeah, he has weight, height, reach, all on his side. In my shoes, you'd have done the same and you know it. Oh, no, I wouldn't. Not on the guests of an old fool like myself. Cadvile, I know that you're not wrong. Hugh, I can't regret what you're doing. 
And my arm will be seconding yours. Yes, well, no mention of this to Aileen until it's over. One way or the other. But depend on it. Never a word. Child, you shouldn't be here. Is it true what they're saying? That Hugh charged Adam with the murder of that young man and that Giles' dagger was the proof? It's true. And the charge is also true? That's true. But go now. You, you shouldn't look at this. I'll go tamely away and leave him. I didn't know it till now. But I love him, Brother Cadvale. Yes, Giles. So do I. <gasps> He's only half the other's size. How could you let him do it? How could I prevent him? Girl, it's better that he doesn't see you now. Is he hurt? No. Cosell is down. His sword's broken off at the hilt. What now? Cosell must fight on with just his dagger. Oh. What's happening? I can't see. Hills put down his own sword. They're both fighting with daggers. Oh, he's mad. He gained the advantage and now he's thrown it away. Oh. Cosell has snatched Hills' discarded sword. So he can kill Hugh at his leisure. Oh, well done, boy! They're struggling on the ground. One of them is rising. Oh, my darling girl! It's you! It's you! Well, Master Berenger, I was mistaken in the best man after all. Your Grace. No blow was struck that killed him. He fell on his own dagger. However, I trust I've proved my case. His deeds prove your case for you all too well. You! Oh, you, your hurt! Oh, hush, love. Don't turn tender on me now or I'm lost. But lend me your arm to lean on like a good wife should before I fall flat at the king's feet. <laughs> <laughs> Young man, you've robbed me of an able deputy sheriff, however foul a fighter. What if I appoint you in his place? Oh, with your grace's leave, I must first take counsel with my bride. Aileen? Whatever is pleasing to my lord is also pleasing to me. <laughs> ah. Was troth ever plighted more publicly? <laughs> You'd better invite the whole of Shrewsbury to your wedding. <laughs> Hugh? Huh? What? Oh, Cadver, oh, come in. Oh. Oh. I've uh, brought you a pot of goose grease for your wounds. Yeah. <laughs> Grazes, that's all. Oh, and uh, and this. Child Seward's dagger, miraculously repaired. Brother Oswald is a skilled silversmith. Oh. It's his gift uh, and mine uh, to your lady. I thank you both. So, at last it's over. Yes. But it isn't justice, is it? And between us, we're forced into the daylight the truth of one man's sins. It covered up the truth of another's. Hugh, justice is only half the tale. From the highest to the lowest extreme of a man's scope, wherever justice can reach him, so can God's good grace. Tonight at Compline, I shall pray for the soul of Adam Cosell. For every man cut down without time for repentance is truly one corpse too many. In One Corpse Too Many, the cast was Brother Cadvale, Glyn Houston, Goddess Aidney, Jane Slavin, King Stephen, Richard Tate, and Gilbert Prescott, John Moffat, Adam Corsell, Geoffrey Whitehead, Aileen Seawood, Joan Walker, Hugh Berenger, Ken Cumberledge, and Edric Flesher, Brian Miller, Petronilla Flesher, Dillis Lay, Torald Blund, Paul Downing, Lame Osborne and Boy, Ian Target, 
Brother Oswald, David Googe. Other parts were played by members of the cast. One Corpse Too Many was written by Ellis Peters and dramatised by Alan Downer. The play was directed by Jerry Jones. <laughs>